Now, friends, I've come here specifically for this statue. One of the questions we have to answer is, what do we fear? Well, I'll tell you what people around here fear. This statue is a monument to the oil workers of Alberta. That's our industry. We're an oil economy. We've been running on of oil for decades. And we kind of thought that it would last forever. But ever since 2008, when the recession hit, we've really suffered. I'm still young enough to remember when everybody wanted to go into the oil industry. Times were booming, we had labor shortages because there was jobs everywhere and we couldn't fill them all. And the future seemed promising for everyone. But people my age, it feels as though that dream was robbed from us because because of uh, actions out of our control, the economy tanked, the oil prices dropped, and they've never truly recovered. And in that light, I think this monument takes on a whole new meaning because this was supposed to be a tribute to what we call the Alberta advantage. You know, we have lower taxes than everyone else. For a, long, for a short time, our economy was better than America's. And we like to think it was because of us. But after many years, the, economy, the oil prices went down. All the workers we laid off. This year, in 2020, Alberta has the second highest unemployment in all of Canada. Somewhere around 20%, I think. And so really, in 10 years, a blink of an eye really, this went from pro being one of the most prosperous, one of the most promising parts of Canada, to being one of the driest, I guess you could say. And very quickly, this monument became a tribute to a bygone era. Very quickly, this symbol of pride, this symbol of prosperity, became nothing more than a reminder of what could have been and what we used to have. And that's what scares me now, because a lot of people my age, especially young men like myself, are struggling to find work. Uh, for myself, I'd say I put out maybe 30 resumes before I get a single callback. I'm going to be talking to my cousin here later. He told me that when he was in Calgary, he would put out 200 resumes and he wouldn't get a single callback. And, you know, maybe you would say you know, maybe it's the government's fault. Maybe it's our fault for not investing in other industries when we could have or when we should have. You know, maybe we were too reliant on a single industry. But I still remember when good times were here. Most most people, and I'm only 23 years old, but even I still remember when you could say times were good. And now all over the world, I know the whole world felt the hard hit when the recession hit, but you know, I guess here being in the Midwest, just like in the Midwest of America, the blue-collar people of Canada really felt like we never recovered. They, they'll tell you that the, we got the jobs back, or they'll tell you that the economy's growing again, but try telling that to the people on the ground here. And what really hurts us is that every now and then, we do get well-to-do activists or celebrities coming up here and, and telling us that our oil is dirty, and we take that personally. And that might seem silly, why would we get so offended by that? It's just oil. I think it's more what the oil represented for us. The oil promised us prosperity, it promised us opportunities, it promised us wealth, it gave us wealth, it promised us jobs and a livelihood. And so when the few people who are still in the oil industry are still there, we say good for them. They're struggling to make ends meet, we know they're not making as much money as they used to. And so, when people who, from our perspective, have never worked a day in their life, come here and they tell us that we're dirty for just trying to make ends meet, that we're dirty for just trying to live the life that we used to, we take offense to that. 
That's why we get so upset when people come up here and tell us that we're dirty, you know, dirty oil producers. Well, we're just trying to live like everyone else. If anywhere else had oil, they'd extract it too, as they do. You know, we're we're not the white collar we're not the white collar capital of the world. We're not we're not the, the tech capital of Canada, we're not the industry capital of Canada. You know, our agriculture is pretty good. We have a lot of dairy agriculture. We had a lot of oil, but now when when the oil companies aren't hiring, you know we're in trouble. And so forgive us for just trying to hang on to what little we had left. And what little pride, what little hope we had left when everything was said and done. You know? And my hope for the future is that we can diversify our economy and that the hope that we all hold, all hold out is that the oil prices will go back up, they'll start hiring again, and hopefully we'll have the same economy we, had, we did 10 years ago. Hopefully we'll be able to come back from the brink, but as it stands right now, most of us fear not being able to put bread on the table right now. Most of us are scared of not being able to pay the rent, not being able to make ends meet, not, even, not being able to provide for our families. It's not just about nice cars and nice houses, it's about, you know, just sustaining ourselves. <laughs>